Welcome back to the internet. I'm on a very loud road because I'm driving through Michigan and they pave the roads out of concrete and then cut big things in them and it makes you sound like you're going down a train track. Yeah! This is the 30 day teach thought reflective teacher challenge. 30 days too late, but I'm doing it anyway. This will be actually day 29, not the fake day 29. That was actually day 28. This will be day 29. And day 29 is how I have changed as an educator. Uh, so this is my seventh year, so I'm seven years in. Um, Jan Quinn, one of our history teachers, said something really interesting about uh, developing as a teacher and changing as a teacher. And she said that for the most part, you're the teacher, the teacher you were on day one is the teacher you are on your last day as well. Teacher you are on year one, that's the teacher you are on year 30, because she's still on the old system where you can retire after teaching for 30 years. No one else will be on that system ever again. But I don't know, I'm not entirely sure I agree with that. I think that I've changed and evolved a lot as a teacher. Um, I think in essence, like some things that are more like personality traits will never change. Like I'm always probably going to be like a ridiculous, crazy person in the classroom. Um, I, I think for the most part, the heart of the teacher never changed. A little Parker Palmer throw out because I haven't done any name dropping in the vlog for a while. You know, I'm, I'm always going to think that my students are super important. I'm always going to put them first. Uh, you know, I'm always going to be there for them and I'm always going to love them. So I don't think that will ever change. And if it does, then I need to get out of teaching because that's that's just craziness. Um, but uh, in some ways, I, th I think methodologically and even a few things pedagogically have changed. And overall, I mean, I've gotten better. And if I hadn't gotten better, then it'd be time to be uh, contemplating either a serious like reevaluation of my priorities or a reevaluation of my career choice because, you know, Anytime you do something for seven years and don't get better at it, uh, that's not good. Um, yeah, so I've gotten better. I think I've learned a lot more uh, different strategies, different ways for reaching the kids. I've got a lot more tools in my tool belt. Um, my classroom management, I think, has become a lot stronger, and I've, I've tightened that up a lot and found uh, new ways to reach kids that I traditionally haven't been able to reach, especially kids that are, like, really rough. Um, or, or even kids who are, you know, my first couple of years, I had no interest. This camera keeps falling over. I had no interest in teaching kids that were like, really the higher kids, the gifted kids, because they're usually little, little poopy faces with poopy face parents who are way over helicoptery. Which I guess I don't know. I guess that's better than some of the kids I have whose parents are like totally not even in the picture. But yeah. So I, I think I've, I've broadened my ability to reach kids, but at the same time, um, I have to work a lot harder to build connections with the kids. I can't, I don't relate to the kids as easily as I did when I was 22, but I think a big part of that is I'm not 22 anymore. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not a young pup anymore. I'm, I'm almost 30 and there's a pretty good gap. Like, I mean, there's a 10 year gap between me and uh, seniors in high school and even more down to the sophomores, which is what I mostly teach. So I have to work a lot harder, and I, but I still, like, I do my homework. Like, I force myself to listen to music I hate and watch TV shows that I think are crap and read, like, stuff on the internet that I would never otherwise read just so I can understand, like, what's important to the kids and how can I hijack that for learning. Um, I've also... Uh, I've changed like a method methodology, like the flipped classroom was not something I'd even heard of my first year teaching. So that's, that's a huge shift in instructional practices and it's put a lot higher emphasis on students' responsibilities and student collaborative learning than uh, me delivering information to them. And that's sort of, I think, one of the reasons why I originally was drawn to teaching was I was really good at explaining things and uh, I feel like I'm a pretty good lecturer and really with the flip model, that's almost completely removed, especially from what we do inside class. So that's a big shift. Um, I've also eased up on test rigor. I was, 
I was doing a unit on, I haven't done biomolecules, I know, I know, shut up. I haven't done biomolecules in a while because it's not in the standards, it's not something that's tested over, and for the most part, they hit it so hard in chemistry that I didn't really see too much of a point in going through it with like a whole unit. And then the last couple of years, I'm trying to teach cells and trying to talk about this and that, and it gets really hard when I mention carbohydrates, and a lot of kids have no idea what a carb is other than those foods that the Atkins diet says you can't have a lot of. So I did that again, but I was looking over some of my quizzes and some of the stuff that I was, you know, some of the test questions that I had over biomolecules was like stuff that I never even knew in high school, like or questions that were like AP bio level. And it's not to say like that my kids shouldn't have rigor. I think that, you know, I like to have rigor in my classroom and I think the kids should be held to a high standard, but some of the test questions were really, really hard. So I've eased up on that a little bit. I remember a, a quotation I was reading a few years ago, you know, um, just talking like, like your class doesn't need to be really hard for kids to learn. Like kids can learn even if your class isn't really, really hard on them. And so I think I sort of reevaluated like, you know, what, what am I doing with my, with my students and what are, what's their path? What's, what's my goal for them? Like, what am I preparing them for? In my, in my college prep classes, I, I throw in a pretty hefty amount of rigor and I give some really hard questions, but I have it mixed in with easier ones to sort of weed out like who, who's ready for the next level, who can go to chemistry, who can go to AP bio. But for my at-risk kids, I mean, and this is where differentiation is really key because I've got some kids in that at-risk class that are set on going to college and I have some kids in that at-risk class who are borderline about ready to drop out of high school. So it's, you know, you have to look at your audience and do a, does a test, you know, I sort of start asking myself, does a test need to be really hard to measure their knowledge? And if it's really hard, am I actually measuring their knowledge or am I measuring their test taking skills? And that could be a whole nother vlog where I get into reflecting and discussing on that. But yeah, that's, those are some of the ways that I've changed since year one as an educator. That was day 29 of the Teach Without Reflective Challenge. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have comments, agree, disagree, just want to troll the crap out of me in the comments, go crazy down there, internet. Go crazy. Thanks for watching again.